back here with turn eight of Greenland and uh, a correction, a correction. It turns out I've been slightly misreading the cards. I don't think I've been doing it a lot because honestly it doesn't come up too often and I, I'm surprised because the way the cards are laid out that I didn't notice this before. But let's take a look at the Beluga there, right? Two successes give you three babies and two energy. Pretty clearly labeled that one is three and one is two. If we come over here to Vinland, we see a two next to the energy and an iron. And I think I've been giving out two iron in addition to two energy, and that's just not correct. I'm pretty sure this hasn't been really affecting play too much, except for the iron that both the Norse and the Thule have uh, been you know, accumulating. So to my reckoning, I believe they've done this twice, because there's no other way that they could have gotten iron, and iron is just too precious of a resource. And it kind of makes sense, because iron, like I said, is, is really valuable, and I can't believe it'd be that easy to get. So they're going to lose two. I'm just going to go ahead and say that I believe they've done it twice. There's no other way they could have gotten iron. No one's gone for the meteorite. I know no one's gone on the bog iron because of the energy requirement to do that. And that also means that the uh, Norse are going to lose two as well. So that actually makes this way more of a game. I was a little afraid that the Norse were going to basically just be able to run away with it by constantly... Um, hunting in Vinland there and getting two iron a turn, but they're not going to get two iron a turn, they're just going to get an iron a turn. So now they have what? Two, four, six points? Uh, still have three here and three there, so at least it's within striking distance and something to think about as we approach this next turn. Um, it seems like the tool and the tunit are just competing with each other and that might be a zero-sum game as the Norse sort of run away with it, even though as it gets colder the Norse are just dis distinct disadvantage due to a lack of a tracker. You don't have one as a monotheist. But, um, yeah, we need to think about that. Okay, here we go. Turn eight, coming up with three cards left. Uh, look at that, nice. We haven't had these a lot. Okay, a southern migration. The Jeer Falcon or Greer Falcon yields three ivory this turn. We do not have one unless it shows up in a migration card. And we have a random elder death. So let's go ahead and look at our migration, southern one. Boom. It is a Norse... Shielding Livestock Raid. Oh, this is an interesting card. But let's first figure out who's going to get replaced. And it's the lowest number, which looks to be that Beluga. I think the Beluga's out. Yeah. It's a little too good to stay in too long. So Beluga gets replaced by this... This, uh, what is that, a Shieling? Shieling Livestock Raid. So anyway, this is an interesting little one, because if you take it into your hand, you can domesticate it, and essentially by paying an Energy or Elder Death, you get two per turn. And you can sacrifice it for two energy at any turn, or any time. And uh, it does kill you pretty easily. A two and a three, and it only gives you two. But the, obviously that domestication card, and it's a raid card. So something to think about, right? It's a raid biome. So you get some nice raid bonuses, right, for some people. Interesting. Not the greatest land, but uh, we'll take it, I guess. It's not really worth points or anything, so it's kind of becoming more irrelevant for the players. Okay, so we did that. We don't have the Falcon, and um, we should roll for random Elder Death. Okay, so the Red, the Norse, they have a guy at one and six. So let's roll and see if we get one of those. Of course, we lose our six. Ah, oh, the Mariner. Damn, that was like, well, luckily we got our guys in the colony. Hopefully that's good enough to hold out for a while. That's, that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Um, the uh, Thule here have three on one, five, and six. They don't lose anybody, and then of course the two are going to lose somebody, so who are they going to lose? Five, their tracker, oh, of course. Kind of an essential guy, and they don't really have a lot of unassigned hunters still. So it's really kind of a big loss to lose their tracker and be able to hunt in the um, the cold side. They don't really have any biomes, except for that one in Markland. They don't really have any ability. Uh, they don't have a sled. Oh, they do have a sled now. That's right, we have excess now with our muskox domestication. So we do have a sled. Interesting. Okay. All right, and this is now a fat, a auctionable item. What do we have here? Imported chain mail on a raid. It turns a two into a one. That's actually pretty good, but it's not really good enough, I think, for the Norse to act on. They really want to keep their ivory for victory points again, and no one else has any ivory, so they can't bid on it. So yeah, that's just gonna stay over here, I think. Okay. Red has to go first. Norse. All right, Norse still got a good thing going up here. They still have iron. It's not going to be easy to get necessarily, but they do have it. Norse could go on to a sort of preventative strategy, trying to take um, 
items away from the other players trying to get the trophies, but really they should probably just go for these meteorites, trying to get those points. That's a really easy, easy to take two points there, I think. I think we're going to try to do that, basically. Do I need to grow? I don't really need to grow a ton right now. Obviously, I have, like, no elders, and I should start thinking about putting victory points on other guys just to secure my victory. I would need a bishop to start proselytizing. And you can see here, if I get a guy on both the yellow and green, I would get four victory points at the end of the game. Or maybe I need to send an emissary. Is that what I need? Yeah, that's what I need. It's actually an acolyte to send an emissary, not necessarily to proselytize. Proselytize lets you uh, attempt to flip a card if you have an emissary on it, so that's my bad. I need to actually think about that better. Hmm. We don't necessarily need to grow terribly right now because we get the one per turn, and that really helps, but it, I also think I can just sort of take risks here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go take that meteorite. right? Yellow and green don't have a lot of extra guys to send at it, so I think we can send a minimal force here thanks to our sweet, sweet sled that our elk hounds have been providing for so many generations. So I think we're going to take... Is three worth it? Yeah, I think we're going to take... Well, because I only need one. I just need some protection. Yeah, so we're going to do that. The alpha's going to go to get the meteorite, and he's going to be guarded by two of his most loyal hunters. The other three, I think they're going to go... Ooh, I kind of have some excess energy, and I don't have a lot to spend. I wonder if I should go for this bog iron. That could be a worthwhile grab, although grabbing more guys and energy is always such a good idea. And the hooded seal is still there, and that's something that's desirable for these other people. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other three. We're going to go to the hooded seal, because I want to try to deny them from going there and uh, secure that as well. Okay, the tunit are up. Oh, they lost their tracker. We're definitely going to need that tracker, because now we can't really get to the Hooded Seal. We could try to fight them, but um, they have more iron than us, and uh, that's always risky. Risky, risky B, you know. We could try to sneak in an Alpha and maybe like one or two guys, one guy, and then see if we can get the less Hunters and try to roll first and get it. That's a very interesting idea, maybe. They need trophies, though. We need to start thinking about getting trophies, because that's what's going to get us the win. And we do hunt, we do have this nice hammer, which lets us help, or our nice imported hammer, which lets us do well on metallurgical and reroll on raids. It's pretty good. So I think what we're going to do is we, we got Markland on lockdown. We're going to have to fight there eventually, but that's okay. I'm, I'm less worried about that. So I think what we should do is try to go for trophies. And maybe we, but we need to grow too. We have energy, so we just need to grow and get trophies. That's the main thing. You're not a trophy, you're not a trophy. The polar bear is a trophy. Probably worth going for. This could be risky. But we're going to try to do it. Oh, I need a tracker, though. Oh, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to kill that polar bear. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to have to spend... Oh, then that's really tough. That's going to be very tough. If we lose one die, that means we're going to have a hard, hard time. Although I could go for the seal pup, too. I could just do that, because I do have the... Um... Could just do that. Oh man, I need a tracker really bad. We gotta keep trackers. So we're gonna keep, promote a guy for free, because we do it for free because of our sweet, sweet daughter hookup. Um, thanks for all the skills, daughters. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these cubes. <sighs> yeah. The pup is still worth a point, so let's try to get that. If we can get doubles on that guy, that's kind of worth it, I think. It's only one point, but something we got to try to do. And we get uh, two babies out of it. That could be really good for us. We kind of still have a lot of energy. We don't need to worry about that so much. Although we could have another elder energy die off phase or whatever. Anyway. That leaves good old yellow. What are they going to do? Now they have guys on Markland, have their Mariner still, so they could reinforce that and try to make that happen. They could send dudes down to Vinland and try to grab that as well. Although they could just always grab stuff. That's pretty nice. But they need victory conditions as well. They reroll metallurgical and do well on raids. Yeah, if only this was worth victory points, but it's not worth victory points. So I think I'm going to have to go for something that's worth points, and I think that's going to have to be the polar bear. Man, I just don't have a lot of guys, but I do have a tracker. Okay, we're going to bring it. We're going to go for the polar bear. I think that's going to be their idea here. Okay. 
So now we go to the negotiate attack phase. Obviously, I've not been negotiating. I just don't really feel like green and yellow have a lot to offer each other since they're really directly competing. So there's no, it's not like, oh, marry my daughter, and then you cannot have access to this cheap, abundant energy source. No, they kind of... Although they're both kind of full energy right now, it's not really worth it to fight or to take Marklin, but we'll see. So they're going to fight each other here. Nobody wants to withdraw because it's such a pain, especially because also they might lose their Mariner and they can only use, if they only have one Mariner, they can only transport four guys to one place, right? So no one really wants to negotiate or withdraw. They're just going to fight. Fight. Um, yellow is going to win because they have two iron, or go first, I should say, compared to the greens once. They have four dice here. No, no hits. Green retaliates with four dice. They get two hits. That's very good, man. Jobs and yellow kind of getting taken out there. That's nice for the good old tunit. We're going to fight anywhere else? No, I think that's it. It's the only place we're going to fight. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and uh, do red since they went first. So they automatically get that meteorite. No one challenged them for it, which was kind of silly because I was worth three points, but, you know. I guess I could have sent a rebel to jungle, but they were going to get it if I didn't kill them off with attacks because they would have had less people. Oh, um, man. So, yeah, they're going to get that. They automatically succeed. They will... They get this in their hand automatically, but they don't get points for it because it is a trophy. We will put it there, right? But they do get a nice precious iron for their efforts. So now they have three. We'll go ahead and do this hooded seal roll. We need three... Nice, we need two successes on this. We got him, nice. So we get two babies and an energy. That was that was a good roll, that was a very good roll. So Norse are looking more and more on top of their game. They were kind of fading away, but I think the switch to monotheism is gonna be what really catapults them because I haven't really adequately adjusted to that for these guys. I kind of think I've let them get away a little too far with grabbing too much iron. And they grab an energy. So yeah, they're doing really well actually right now. That makes going for the bog iron really attractive next turn because we actually have energy to do it, even though it's on the cold side. That's actually going to be kind of difficult, but sort of worth it, I think. And of course, we'll do the Vinland roll, knowing that, of course, we get to refill or turn fours into ones thanks to our sweet, sweet cold forging process. And we reroll threes. So fours become successes. We reroll threes. We roll, what, five dice here? Four, no, six. Six. Two successes. The four becomes a one automatically. We get to reroll threes. We don't have any of those. So twos, threes, and sixes kill us. Boom, boom, boom. Three deaths. Okay, but that's okay because we get two guys back. So we literally just lose one cube. That's actually okay with me. And then we get two energy and one iron. Just one this time. And I think we're kind of maxed out. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, they actually do need two more. Wow, the Norse are just cleaning up. Really cleaning up here. That was a devastating round, actually, for the other players. I think that's not going to be good for them. Uh, all right, green is going to go. They are going to hunt this harp seal pup. We're going to try to get the die we need. Do we want to roll that hunter? No, because I just need guys. So we're going to roll the three guys together, and hopefully we get a nice hit. We do have a tracker, though, so that's helpful. We do, we did not get triples. Oh, that would have been nice. Oh, we did get doubles though. Booyah, that's exactly what we wanted. Okay, so we get two guys, desperately needed hunters over here. We also successfully hunted that, so you guys come back here. And you get to come with me. And you're a trophy now. A very small trophy because you're really just a seal pup. I don't know why we would think that's so cool to like show off like our sweet, sweet trophy of a seal pup skin. Yay. We took down babies. We're so good. I guess that was tough. It was cold. Cold hands, man. It makes everything tough and cold. Okay, so we're going to slide that over just because I think that's just, like I said, there's no reason to keep gaps as far as I understand in the line because um, there's no movement from the bottom to the top at all. So that seems like okay to me to do. Uh, and green, will green hunt here as well? Do they need the energy? So they do only have seven, so it is kind of worth it. But then phew, so many dice could kill you. I think we're going to hold off. I don't want to lose any guys right there because we need to kind of maybe maintain the numbers advantage for the battle next turn there. 
Okay, that leaves good old yellow. They're trying to go for this polar bear. They gotta roll four dice. Now, they have this tracker, so I mean, they, I guess they get to reroll threes and fours because I've been kind of ignoring that. That's been a bad mistake I've been kind of uh, forgetting about. I don't think they get any other bonuses. Their axe isn't gonna help them here. Which seems kind of weird to me, but that's definitely not gonna help them here. Um, so they get to reroll what? Threes and fours. We have four dice. We need one success. So we did get the success at least. We're gonna reroll those fours. I don't think the five, does the five kill us? No, so we can take that five out. The two kills us though. So we're gonna reroll these guys. And we got another death, but we did not get our double. So that probably wasn't really smart to reroll because we had, well, that was really dumb actually. I don't know why I thought I was gonna actually get that, but that was dumb. Um, yeah, I don't know why I rerolled this. That was kind of a dumb move. Because I basically just lost what I was going to get here, and that was kind of the whole point of going to the polar bear was to get more guys. So that was dumb. That was that was silly. I shouldn't have done that. Um, so yeah, they don't really get much, and they get an ivory. Well, you know, an ivory's okay. But damn, they they really really need guys. That was not a that was not a particularly brilliant move. That puts them behind on the eight ball. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. So it goes. Mistakes made live on camera. Okay. Phase five, domestic animals. Once, okay, we do actually have to feed the animals here, so I should have thought about that. I probably should have gone to do the Markland roll, but maybe next turn will be more important. So we're gonna feed our sweet musk ox and his, all of his friends. We're gonna give them two energy to feed them because they're ravenous beasts. And they provide us with two. That's kind of helpful. Yellow's wishing they had a nice domesticated animal right now. That would be really helpful. Yellow gets nothing. Uh, we don't have to pay for our nice sweet settlement coat, so we're gonna go ahead and grab another one of these guys for the old Norse. We're looking stronger at every turn now. They're gonna be able to actually promote some guys into the elder positions. It's very nice for them. They might be able to pull off some super moves. Any elder actions? No, I don't think so. We don't need to banish anybody. There's no domestications or tool making or any of that kind of stuff that needs to go down. Yeah, so I think that's it. So this is turn eight. Let's take a look at Table North again is almost almost completely cold. Southern doing okay. Not a lot left. Some very dangerous trophy items. A lot of triples. It's gonna be difficult to get these triples. It's almost worth actually getting that technology just to try to hunt that guy. That might be what uh, Yellow has to do for a little come from behind win. I don't know. We're gonna have to find out. Anyway, that's the end of turn eight.